Thank you for checking out my video. I really love Hatsune Miku and enjoy sharing some of that dedication by making videos all about her. To improve my content, I decided to launch my own Patreon page, where you can support me if you feel like Miku's magic reached you by watching them, with neat rewards waiting too. Link in the description. Well, that's all, and now enjoy the new video. Hello, Kevin from Sankini Miku here again. As always, thank you for checking out my newest video. Today's Miku live review will be very special for me. Why? Well, it's about this one. Magica Mita 2014 was the first one I attended myself. Let's check it out. So as I said, it should come as no surprise that the second Magica Mita ever is so dear to my heart. Since it was a dream of mine going to a Miku concert for quite some time at that point, as you can see in more detail in my How Did I Get Addicted to Hatsune Miku video, it was just magical seeing it really happening. Truly the start of an addiction. But don't worry. I will still have a fair look at this concert as always. The footage we are looking at, and the one I attended, was filmed on August 30, 2014 in Osaka's Index Osaka Hall 5, fitting around 6,500 people, including me and some of my friends. As always, there was an amazing exhibition part of it on the same day. Only that year had a second location though. On September 20th, there was another performance in the Tokyo Metropolitan Gymnasium with room for 8,000 people. That one had no exhibition though, so the main event is the Osaka concert. Anyway, let's have a look. Did they fix some of the issues I had with the first Mirai? What did they do with the many new ideas the original had? Wow, we saw very differently! After some ambient music plays, some female performers come on stage carrying some lights. Then, dubstep music begins to play as they move them around, even synced up with effects on the screen behind them. This is a cool way to pump up the audience and is appealing to Lucas as well. Then she finally comes into existence. I can't even put into words how ecstatic I was when I first saw Miku appear. Miku starts off with her guitar, performing the rock song Kagedo Days. One of the few new additions to this one and while I was so glad when it finally began back then, this is still probably my least favorite song of the concert. The author's style is just not something I care for. The chorus especially sounds kind of all over the place. Oh, I see some familiar faces in the band. Many who appear here would become the standard for many more future concerts, save for the girl on the keyboard. A shame, she's pretty cute. By the way, the current member Magmi is cool too, but let's move on. Still nice how much energy this song conveys. Oh man, Ijin and Dream Fever, I love this song so much. From this moment on during the concert I knew I was just in heaven. It was everything I ever wished for. Miku's voice sounds so amazingly electronic. But wasn't that also played at the first meter? Yes it was, but this version is far superior. In general, did the year prior have rearranged versions of many songs, this one included. But the energy of the chorus was lost in process for a few songs, this one included. So finally we get to enjoy the song in all its potential. The chorus just electrifies so much, as Miku sings my favorite parts, then no Yugi, and more so, in such a unique tuning that just stands out to me especially in these parts. Well, the rest is as good as it was before, nice effects and costume. As this concert doesn't introduce many new songs, there will be almost no new ones for Miku to wear. You can hear some nice cheering from the audience near the end and we get a general review of the concert hall. Doesn't look too great, does it? Just a play out hall. Let me assure you that the acoustics were great on the location though. Legendary song. Nice, one of the exclusive songs. For the first time, the year was a CD featuring some of the new stuff released prior to the event. That gave people the chance to get to know some of these and be more excited about them during the gig. I like the visual effect at the start of it where Miku is not quite there, as if there was a problem with an analog signal. This song offers a nice mix of emotional verses in an epic Miku voice bank and a very fun chorus. Miku moves around a fair bit carrying the mic stand. The best part is the solo singing part that conveys great emotions if you check out Miku's face. Yeah, it's also worth checking out the top screen once more. Good addition to the concert overall. Wow, the memories. When I heard Miku talk in her usual amazing voice, I was just so happy. I was so glad that they didn't let the original voice provider sing her again. She just sounds so cute, even if it's just a standard introduction. Pretty neat how they changed the beginning. Miku wants the audience to cheer along in the beat of the song Ali Hurta Sekai Sefku. Then she changes into the right outfit. Well, just a catchy tune, featuring nice light effects and a good usage of the top screen. Miku stands as cute as well. The girl on the keyboard is really something. Check out her expression when she's so absorbed in her playing. Here it is again, one of my favorite Din and Land songs. As it didn't waste to the audience after she sang her first words, we're in for such a cute love story this song has about. Well, many people think this is quite a boring one, but I ask you to check out the actual lyrics. Maybe that way you can appreciate it more. The movements of the trip fit everything going on in the events happening so well. One of the dance spots is sped up to make it different from the year before, a nice touch. The best thing the song has to offer is its climax near the end with such a cute conclusion. Sure, there are more exciting songs from a musical point of view, but that's not all that counts. As 
I said in my recent video party about my top 10 producers, I really love 40 meter P. This song of his is one of his weaker ones in my opinion though, something is lacking. Still nice to enjoy Miku's voice, she is not at fault here. The light show is quite interesting but looks a bit weird in this concert hall. The crowd? Hmm, in general you can't hear them cheering that loudly in this concert. Definitely a problem of the audio mix though, wasn't really like that I can assure you. Also strange that there was just one in the land song sandwich between the Miku part, whatever. One of my favorite songs of all time, which is no wonder considering was produced by both my number 2 and 1 producer of all time. This song feels so free. Everything about it does. Miku's dancing, her joyful high singing, especially in the chorus. How long did it take Miku to practice this complicated dance I wonder? The whole thing is backed by a colorful light display, also in the upper screen. I also have to point out that Miku's projection of course the meter module are both without flaw. Let's just enjoy this to the fullest as Miku extends her arms near the end, trying to leap off. Pretty Tomorrow? A title that would have fit the previous song better. Well, this is also returning from 2013. I think you can see by now why I spaced the reviews of 2013 and this out so far apart. It's all good but still a bit difficult to review the same song several times. Just wanted to point that out. Here, the crowd might be at its loudest yet. No wonder this Mitchy M song is just a good fit for a live show. Even the Diva PV had to perform on a stage. The crowd consisted of aliens though. Wait, maybe Miku really sees us as the aliens? This song just makes you wanna move. They fix something. Miku doesn't randomly transform back to her normal module in the instrumental. Was pointless to begin with, so nice fix. I think you can see how much they polished for 2014. It's funny seeing one shot from the top, since there's no security visible that is present for a rock concert full with rioting fans. Well, no need for that in that kind of audience, but honestly, there's still a staff present. They only hide between rows and mainly pay attention that nobody films the concert, which is a no go in Japan. Oh, sorry, bit off topic here. Once again such an amazing improvement of the same song from before, you can finally feel the emotional quality the song offers. This instrumental makes it stand out so much more and you can see the result in the cheering before the chorus. I'd say the song is around 390% better now. Also, on this stage you can see Miko's feet. Yeah. The solo specifically is so much improved. Nice! The perfect version of this amazing song with a mix of emotions and energy. Well, this song is impressive from a musical point of view, but Meiko singing, I don't know, not a good way to give Meiko enough credit. The audience seems to feel similarly. And the solo can once again see what a musician looks like when they are deeply connected with their music. Here you go, the fab material for all the female fans. Again, this is one of the few songs in which Kaito actually sounds damn good. Len too, but for him it's not that surprising. Nice blue and yellow light show. I distinctly remember talking to my Italian friend Gabriele after the concert, mentioning that even the Kaito song wasn't that bad. Hi there, if you're watching. This feels like a small boy band. If you wanna be mean, you could argue they got both the Kaito and Len song out of the way by having this duet. But no, I actually enjoy this song. Same can surprisingly not be said for this emotional Miku ballad. The effects on the upper screen are nice, but to me this one is a bit too static and drags out for a bit too long. Miku's expressions are the highlight. Of course she looks pained, but it kinda appears like she was pissed near the beginning. Well of course that's not the case. I really love the effect in the solo singing scene though, when all kinds of little fireflies or something are visible behind Miku. Before the Luca solo starts, you can hear somebody in the crowd screaming, I wanna marry you Miku, nope, too late. Well it's funny, because this is again proof for the weird audio mix. I remember screaming many things myself, but none of it is audible. Anyway, Hello Worker is just an okay song in my opinion. It's nice and fits Luca well, but it's nothing special. Her pose in the chorus is nice nevertheless. I like how it gives her a chance to interact with the audience in the bridge too. Another exclusive song is this Miku and Luca duet. It's from Crush Diva F2, which was released a few months prior to the event. Well, many songs come from the recent game or a teaser for an upcoming one. The highlight of this one is the nice choreography and of course the complimenting voices. Their moves in the solo stand out the most, very cool indeed. Neat touch how Miku looks at Luca while singing as she strikes a serious expression. The chorus is a true earworm, really nice. Why did it never return? Miku seems to be baffled too, just check out her face at the end. <laughs> Yeah. 
This is a very special case. I think I rarely ever played this song in my free time. It's just not really that good to me, but still such a perfect live song that I honestly thought was one of the best moments of the entire gig. Maybe also because it was the only song I didn't recognize when it was played? I love how Miku walks around singing the verses. It looks so adorable. She can even make simple things like that stand out. And of course, there's one specific movement that looks so wacky. But then, the reason it is so great live, everybody moves together with Miku back and forth. It just feels so good. There's even a shot of the audience section I was in. I recognize some people, talk to them, but I'm barely not visible. The end is one more of these interactive parts. Such an experience. Is this one any good if you're just watching the footage? Change of pace for something more touching again. I can only keep repeating myself. This Miku turning is a big reason why I love her. What more can I say? Tell you what is such a well known, lovely Miku song. I can understand that this might be boring if you're just watching, as this is just the same song after song from the previous year. But life, this is different, you don't care about that kind of thing. Also, we check out the final result. The amount of new stuff is only a small part of the enjoyment. <laughs> Time for it into rock again. It's funny how even when showing off her cool side, it's impossible not to enjoy her cuteness. Just have a look at her adorable face, kind of framed by her hood, especially visible in some of the close-up shots. This perfect song is obviously also one of the crowd's favorites. Well, again, back to the sentimental kind of mood. Guess they didn't want two of these, especially because both are by KC back to back. This one is even more of a tearjerker. The long intro instrumental gives you enough time to realize this fact. I wanna point out again what Miku's voice breaking the silence does to me. Even when listening to this in public, I get goosebumps at this part most of the times. This battle is so much better than Glow, I think. The chorus just makes me wish that this moment never ends. The disco ball is a nice effect supporting this. There's one break in the song in which Miku strikes a happy expression. She apparently doesn't want us to get too sad. Thank you, Miku. I really also adore the gesture of her extended an arm towards us. Man, look at her sad expression at the end. Compare that to the conscious eye modules. Just so much better here. Please don't be sad, Miku-chan. Thankfully, something upbeat again. Nice song, even with one of the few performances that were cooler in the original. The band interaction is missing and the instrumental is just a tiny bit less interesting. The costume and dance are pleasant to look at as before. I think it's cute how Miku turns her face in some parts. I always try recreating this, but I always seem to be looking in the wrong direction. <laughs> her voice in the bridge is impressive. Seems to be different to the original. After that, there's a great dance during the solo and then of course the best part, with her cat-like performance. Well, the song is called Cat Food after all. The last exclusive song and yet another highlight for me. Can't be solely because it was a new song, no, I just love the song. As I recently also said in my video about F second edits, it's so positive, again carries the feeling of being free. Just check out the little speech prior to the song and the dance with such a happy face. This makes me think the world is a good place. Miku's happy, so why shouldn't we be? 9 out of 10 animals on the top screen agree as well. Gee, the ecstatic look on Miku's face while she's waving to the audience in the middle section. I'm sure it was so happy life. So just join Miku celebrating this ass day. No, it's not ass day. Why was this only ever performed here? Wow, very rare. During the end of Earth Day, Miku speaking while the song is still going, and the song directly transitions into Yume Yume. Fantastic! It's nice being in the happy section of the concert after some of this heavy stuff. Nice steam effect and an initial dance to kick it off. This is one of Deku Nina's popular happy songs before we switch to more rock music. The stage is nice and colorful. Miku's tuning almost seems like a parody of herself. So overly cute, especially in her solo singing. Well, I like it! It's great seeing the audience scream together as well as the heart Miku gives us all as a present. I wanna compare this to Consciousa again. The same song was performed there, but still, it appears to be so much more easygoing and happy here. Man, the final dance must be so hard! Gambare Miku-chan! Well, she never messes up, does she? take back everything I said about us being the happy section of the concert. This is the last one before the encore, one of my all time favorites again. You can tell it was made for the meters, Miku is using the entirety of the stage. This song has a nice story and has a mix of slow parts and an all out where she's running around in the chorus. I love the parts of Miku singing that sounds as if they could cut through everything else. Just pay attention to the key syllable of the Kiniwa right before the second chorus. They added a blue screen for the slow part in which Miku feels so powerless. This part isn't that slow in the original song, it's nice how they change some parts to make them stand out more alive. Same for Stardust as Miku solo in the end in the Miku pass. But Miku, you aren't powerless. Sure enough, she goes all out in the ending part again. There's an extended scene that gives everybody a chance to celebrate this moment, backed by chaotic sounding instruments. Again, I'm almost on the recording. You know what? My main Miku plushie is visible. What the heck? I'm not even kidding, that's her. Oh, by the way, they reused just a few of Miku's fake talking parts from 2013. 
seriously running out of things to say about these. Sure, everybody screams for more. Doesn't sound too loud in this one, but I already told you what that's to be blamed on. I was so happy at that moment, we were thinking, this was amazing, but three of my favorite songs were in a place with Devil, Shake It and Thank You. Well, a cool build up of one of these is suddenly playing, you know what's coming, giving me goosebumps. There she appears again, in that costume and with that pose for that song, yeah. You know what I think about the song by now, yeah. I love how she appears to be a spoiled little princess in the song, you know I love it, but the solo singing part even more. There it is again by the way, that special sounding voice of first, pay attention to the last syllable of baby, cutting through space and time, 10 out of 10. Okay, I was thinking, still two fairies of mine missing. I'm not even kidding! So you can imagine my reaction when I saw the three of them appearing for Shake It. From there on, it was just a big oh yeah. It's a party song, just an experience life. The great show by the three of them is just a nice bonus on top of everything. Everybody feels connected when screaming oh yeah together. It's nice that you can even see the audience on the top screen. Gee, I better save something about this for 2015. This and Sankey are the only songs in every Mila concert so far. Oh shit, did I spoil it too much? Funny how they sometimes have a nice beat while introducing the band but no Miku and sometimes pretty much no beat but Miku does it. Which one do you guys prefer? Anyway, it's Miku's turn this year. Not bad but nothing noteworthy either. Always a blast screaming Miku with all you got though. But then one of my favorite Miku speeches. Her tuning is perfect. Miku's happy she met all of us and announces the final song Sank You. You can hear some loud audience reaction. It's obvious that many wanted to hear just the same. I have no words. Yes, there it is. Literally everything I wished for, now even thank you. You can just about imagine how surreal this was for me. After such an outstanding experience, I could end by thanking Miku for this evening and more, with a song like this in such a lovely voice. Even after hearing it so many times, I still love the song so much. It's even the more interesting version. Unlike other ones, Miku walks all over the stage. There are incredible illustrations too. Then we just celebrate her together, as everybody chants thank you. They even edit the text on the recording. It's just that harmony, her voice and the occasion, everything in a flawless mix. I was just in heaven there. The second verse with these moves stand out even more. Then it's time to release one more Sankyo in the last chorus with even more energy. I'm very sorry, I'm obviously repeating myself, but it's difficult expressing in words how much Miku means to me, mostly when hearing this song. It all ends with some nice slow gestures. But where's the confetti? Oh, there it is! Miku thanks us for this evening. No, I wanna thank you. Well, just a bit too short before she disappears. Maybe she has to go to the restroom now. Man, I was so happy and I still am watching this. A perfect encore to an outstanding concert. There are some screams for more, but then the announcer tells us that it's really the end. The people are okay with it, they are just happy and celebrate together. I was too, believe me. Then the credits roll with the theme song. Only year theme song was not played live. Was not so fitting as a live song anyway. Well, this was everything I ever wished for. Just wow. It's time for the verdict. This will be shorter than my last few ones, I'm sure. Man, this concert. Let's get my main point out of the way first. This concert might be the least innovative one of all the Miras. I mean, there was the original, of course, with so much innovation in both 2015 and 16 had loads of new stuff in them too. So in that regard, you could argue this one was a bit boring, but I disagree. This is maybe true if you're only watching the recording where previously familiar with the concert from the year before. But this just fixed so many issues with the original one and nailed the magic of the meters for the first time. Literally all my problems from the year before were fixed, I swear I was not involved in the process. The stage layout. I was complaining about the year before, Meek and the rest were all clearly separated from the band on the upper level. This time they were more together. Like the year prior, there was a nice big screen with special effects, nice light show in general. While the acoustics in the concert hall were good, it wasn't really a pretty one to see in shots far away from the stage in the recording. There was no singer backing up Meek in the chorus anymore, which was just pointless to begin with. Speaking of somebody helping Miku out, I must have not been the only one who was sad about Miku being voiced by Saki Fujita instead of hearing her usual tune voiced by the actual software. This too was changed and we could hear Miku speaking in her beautiful voice as always. This was a big part of my immersion. Miku's projection was spot on as it had been most of the time. It was only improved a tiny bit in future concerts when the lights were made even more unnoticeable. The meter module is amazing anyway. The band included many members for the first time that would perform in many concerts to come. They were pretty cool, I liked them. The keyboardist especially was pretty cute, seemed to be really enjoying herself. But oh well, the current one isn't that either. If you care for a great audience reaction, this concert isn't the best one to watch. I can assure you that it was mostly the sound mix in this one, because live we all cheered with everything we got. Still a small flaw of the recording. The setlist was so similar to the year prior which wasn't really a problem because of the high quality it had. Even so there were some particularly nice additions to it, which I would be glad to see Earth Day return the most. Many songs still sounded very different here, because the year before had special arrangement versions for many of them. 
While this was an interesting idea, the energy of some of them was lost, so I'm glad that this year finally gave us the opportunity to enjoy every song to the fullest, especially Shinkai Shoto and Nijigen Dream Fever sounded so much better here. The encore! Just wow! What a leap from 2013! After a strangely unsatisfying one, we now got a perfect finale, at least for me. Even if the three aren't your personal favorites, you have to agree that they saved three popular classics for the very end. That's how it should be for an encore. So that's everything. This was similar to 2013, but refined pretty much all issues I ever had. Even little things like the weird costume change in Fully Tomorrow was taken care of. You could complain about too much of the same, but that would be very nitpicky. I mean, Mikuba had nearly the same show for years and this was only the second time before 2015 changed a lot already. But they were aware that new stuff was important to keep things interesting, so they even had new songs for this one. Every meter from here on changed far more, but I'm glad they first focused on nailing the general direction. For this setlist, this was the perfect concert. Of course other concerts with different ones are exciting in their own way. I loved every second of it live, it was a dream coming true and rewatching it is also still a blast. One of my absolute favorite concerts. I called it Magica Meter 2013 Deluxe. Wait, did I even mention any flaw in this verdict? Gee, I have to write? Oh well, obviously I didn't like every song in the setlist. There you have it. Do I sound more objective now? Yeah, I love this concert a lot. Of course it's so special because it was the first one I attended myself, but it's also just an amazing concert. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you can give it a thumbs up, comment, share with your friends and subscribe to my channel to never miss another Miku video again. My channel is all about her. So, until next time, have a nice Miku day!